Our first step is to grab a book bag. Now, these backpacks are all different shapes and sizes, and also we have different styles and colors, so no one will know that it's from the food shelf. Once you have a backpack, it's time to fill it. So, we can fill it with school supplies, drinks, and any type of food item that you would need. My little brother's out of diapers. Down in Bronx, Bronx, the kids go sledding down snow covered slopes. And now that my bag is full, I can one, put it in my locker and pick it up at the end of the day. Two, I can take it to a teacher's room and I can go get it at the end of the day. Or three, I can give it to any staff member and they can take it to student support services where I can pick it up at the end of the day. I'm here to pick up my bag. Oh, there it is right there. Go ahead and go back. Okay. I love Paris. The next day, if you don't need the backpack, Please return it to any of the pink bins that are all around the school so we can use it again. Thank you. I love Paris in the rain. I love, I love in the rain. Oh, I love. You can donate any non-perishable food items, school supplies, and toiletries in any of these pink baskets around the school. Hello Ross students and staff, I'd like to take this time to thank all of our students who have volunteered through Youth Ventures for our Food Shelf Committee, also the volunteers from Student Council and our Making a Difference campaign. Thank you so much for making the Food Shelf come together. I'd again like to invite any students in need to contact any adult in the building if you'd like to access our Ross Food Shelf. Thank you. October 1st is the first day of homecoming week, and on that day is our class color day. So look out for any posters and watch the morning announcements for what color your class should be wearing. This day, October 2nd, is Get Up and Go Day, so get up and go. And go to the pancake breakfast at 6.30 a.m. that Tuesday. Here at Roz.
that just song over there. Wednesday, October 3rd is the Powder Buff Volleyball Game. Powder Buff is junior, juniors and senior guys playing volleyball. It costs $6 to play, but you can watch for free. Students can bring guests, however, a guest form is required to be filled out. Which you can pick up in the activities office. What, what is semi-formal attire? attire? respect at a pep fest. Well, I think the number one thing is when people are out there performing or participating in the pep fest, that you cheer them on, you show that you really care about the school and the community spirit that they have. When the school song is played, you stand up, you appreciate everybody that's put the time and effort into the pep fest and make sure that you know that you're a part of the community and you respect everything that they do. Um, singing for the school song. One, um, wear Raider gear. Two, Stand for the school song. We have a great school song and our pet band does a great job playing it. Um, so let's stand and get excited about it. The third is be engaged in the pet fest and um, get involved, cheer, get excited. So. Where do you sit at pet fest? I agree, over here. 10th grade. Uh, 11th graders over here. This is a reminder for all the junior and senior girls. On the Monday of homecoming, there's a powder puff game at 6 p.m. You'll want to sign up by today, actually, by 3 o'clock. There will be forums at lunches in the, or in the activities office. <laughs> hey, during homecoming week, Rad is doing two things. First thing is, during lunches, we're having trivia booths set up so you guys can win prizes. And also doing an anti-texting campaign where you can sign this pledge sheet right here uh, at lunch during Monday, Wednesday, and Friday during all lunches. The day before graduation, my daughter drove to go meet a boy. And she never made it. He was texting her to tell her directions of where she needed to go. And I guess she just looked away for too long. Today, she would have been 19 years old, exactly. 
I was on my way home. I had my girlfriend in the car, and I'm just reading a text message, responding. And the next second, I look up and I see a bicyclist crashing the windshield. This is my sister. She was looking at my message that I had just sent her. When she looked up, her truck flipped. She was actually ejected through the driver's side door, and she landed in the ditch. People will tell you over and over again, it's not your fault. But knowing that you were the person that she was talking to when she was killed. If I could talk to her one last time, I would just say I'm sorry. It's a simple text message. Where are you at? Three simple words. I sent one stupid, meaningless text and killed a man. Four little letters. That's what killed her. 